Hello, welcome to Basic Arithmetic Without a Calculator. I'm Elizabeth Johnson and this is Lesson 2, Subtraction of Whole Numbers. When we talk about subtraction, we talk about this symbol, the minus sign. And some of the words used for subtraction are take away, minus, find the difference, less than, and decrease. But no matter how you say it, it all means the same thing. You're taking one quantity of something away from another quantity. Let's demonstrate in terms that we all understand, and that is money. If I went to the shops with $10 and I spent four of it, that is a subtraction example. $10 minus $4. And I would have $6 left after that. So 10 minus 4 equals 6. And that's basically what subtraction is about. But if you have a bigger problem like this one, how do you go about solving it? Well, just as in addition, you want to start by rewriting the problem. So you want to put one number directly on top of the other. The number that's going to be subtracted from the other goes at the bottom. And we line them up from the right to the left so that the units are all lined up, the tens are lined up, hundreds, thousands, tens, thousands, and so forth. And of course, the next thing you want is your subtraction symbol, and you want a bar across the bottom. Now, with this in mind, we're able to begin our subtraction. Now, there are two different methods that you can use. Whichever method you learned in school or whichever one you find simplest, that's the method for you. You don't have to learn a different method. Uh, you can try a new one if you want to, but always go with the one that works best for you. Now, this first example I'm going to show you will be the one where you put a 1 at the top and a 1 at the bottom, and this is how it works. When you have a number at the bottom that is actually larger than the number you want to subtract from, the number at the top, well, what do you do to solve it? In the first example, we'll add a 1 to the top and a 1 to the bottom in the row to the left. Now, these two ones act differently to each other. The 1 at the top acts as a 10, the, and it gets added to the existing number. The 1 at the bottom acts as a unit and gets added to the existing number. So let's go ahead and continue the demonstration. 12 minus 8 equals 4. Now I've got 1 minus 1 plus 7, which is 8. And I can't do it, so I'm going to have to add 1 to the top and 1 to the bottom again. This one acts as a 10 and turn that one into an 11. And this one is 8, 1 plus 7. So I've got 11 minus 8 equals 3. Next row over, I've got 4 minus 1 plus 3, which is 4. 4 minus 4 equals 0. And then you've got 6 minus nothing, which is 6. And 2, take away nothing, is 2. So that's your first method. That's called adding 1 to the top and 1 to the bottom. Now, how about that second method? When you're doing it this way, it's called borrowing from your neighbor. And that's basically what we're going to do. When it comes to this problem that we had, and you're trying to take 8 away from 2, what we're going to do this time is we're going to scratch out the number to the left, and we're going to take one unit away from it, turning this 1 into a 0, but turning my 2 into a 12. Now, there's 12 minus 8, which is 4. You notice, of course, it's the same answer. This one has become a 0, and again, you can't take 7 away from 0. So what do you do? You cross the 4 out and turn it into a 3, because you've borrowed one of its units. That one gets put in front of the 0, and it turns the 0 into a 10. So 10 minus 7 equals 3. Continuing to the left, 3 minus 3 equals 0. And 6 minus nothing is 6. And 2 minus nothing is 2. So you see, you get the same answer no matter which method you use. And again, if you are familiar with one of these methods, then go ahead and use that. And if you want to challenge yourself and try a new method, then you should try that as well. I'm going to leave you with your example problems now. Make sure you try them all. 
and good luck with it. I'll see you in the next video.